modern light bulbs are now pretty much LED as the, uh, the standard. Uh, but going back to around about the 1900s, this is actually a carbon filament. So it'll be made out of a little piece of carbon. It's getting really, really hot. We moved on from carbon and moved on to the next one. This one's a bit brighter. This is a tungsten filament. This dates from around about 1915. And we've been using tungsten lights right up until recently. Osram, great name in lights. Electricity made by friction. Material here has been rubbed against a different material, and this ball here is getting charged up, and that's causing the hair to get charged up, and they repel. Perhaps more my line. This is chemistry. So we put the electrodes in there, and we generate electricity. So we've got two different metals placed in a solution of an acid to make the current of electricity. This is how Alessandro Volta invented the first batteries way back in the 1800. And nowadays we make electricity largely from magnets. So now we've got a big magnet and the coil moving inside the magnet. When the coil moves inside the magnet, then we generate electricity. Wimshurst machine, invented by James Wimshurst between 1832 and 1903. Machine were used from the mid 1880s onwards to produce static electricity for laboratory experiments. Not something I'm particularly familiar with. It's a sort of experiment, sort of things like here a plastic rod with a cloth to get it charged up using fur. And we use that for different demonstrations. And here we've got the, the jar, which you can charge up the top. Over here we've got Ronchen's <laughs> tube. He actually was the man who discovered X-rays and uh, use something like this to take the very first egg rays which were put onto photographic plates. The model of Alexander Volta's pile, so he's got different discs there, and he put a uh, cardboard, I think it was, a clock in between the, the discs. There it is, the uh, birth of the battery, this is a zinc battery. Zinc and carbon and solution of potassium bichromate and dichromate. And then a whole set of different cells. So here's an example where you've got two metals of different reactivity. One of them is aluminium, the other one is copper. And you connect the circuit and uh, you get a voltage. You know, you yeah. And the modern way of ele making electricity is with a photo cell. So inside here we've got a photo cell. And if we stop the light getting to it, we see the voltage goes down on the meter. Just the Tesla's egg. It's not connected to anything at all. And then you press the button. It moves around. I wonder why. Thompson's jumping rings. Electricity and magnetism are very closely related, of course. Magnetic field experiment. So, I don't know if you can see the compasses turn on the magnetic field, the electrical field, electrical current. 
we can get the magnets to move. Electricity and magnetism very, very closely related. So now we've got electromagnets pulling up there. You can use this as a, a switch. So here we've got a, a wheel that we can turn and that's turning um, a magnet within a coil, I think. And if we keep our eye on the bulb at the back, get the bulb to light up. This is moving a magnet inside a coil making electricity go backwards and forwards. That's the modern way, of course, of making electricity. Modern things as well, there's the solar panels on the house. We've got the wind turbines. All different ways of making electricity. We use this electricity for, well, not just for switching on the lights. Here we've got um, an electric kettle, electric heater. Oh, different electric heaters. How about the, the vacuum cleaner down here? Or a table cooker? Or a hair dryer? Need a haircut? Or a shave? Curling irons? More kettles. And a uh, electric cooker over there. On the left here is a Bendix washing machine from uh, 1947. There we've got the same machine. They used to be hand done or with a, a treadle. This one is one of the early electric ones, I think. Had all of these um, electrical devices. This is how. Many people did their washing. This is from the 1930s, and I seem to remember one of these in my house. Um, I don't think we ever used it, but this is the dolly and this is the tub, so this is the dolly and the tub. And then over here we've got a mangle for drying your clothes. So your clothes went through there and this one turned. When I was a little boy, we used to have one of these, but it was a uh, an electric one. And uh, you put your wet clothes in and press the button and it would um, push all the water out. And that's how we used to dry our clothes. I don't quite remember cookers like that, but uh, maybe a slightly modern, modern, more modern version. We never, we didn't have electric. I think ours were always gas. This is one of the very early refrigerators from 1936. I definitely remember my grandmother having one almost exactly the same as this one. Pressed cold. And there's the electric mangle I was talking about. So I remember having this in our kitchen. So the, the washing went here, it's a top loader. You put all your washing in there and when it's finished doing its thing, then it went through the mangle at the back and uh, it would come out more or less dry. The uh, front loaders came much, much later. There's a modern electric cooker. Oh, and the twin tub. Do you remember the twin tubs? So you did your washing on one side and your drying on the other and the drying is done centrifugally, it gets spun around. Absolutely fascinating. Have one of these calculators used to, uh, not, not quite as elaborate as that one, it used to belong to my father-in-law. Here we've got demonstrations of different sorts of calculators. Going back to the abacus and the slide rules. I still have my slide rules, so I've got a couple of those. And then we can come back into the more modern age, which we'll start with the personal computers. Since the Enfield electric car, this one's from 1976 or thereabouts, 
and was part of a project to test out electric cars. Given reasonable range, 70 miles, so uh, not bad for those times. And nippy for around town, but not, not so good for a long run. Electric vehicles are not new. These are it's an electric trolley which has been used to move things around a power station. And then there's been various attempts at the electric bikes and scooters, including this one, which is the Sinclair C5. Boys are trying out the bomb blast shelter, which was used apparently. I've, I've never seen this before uh, by the guards. Buckingham Palace looks like. And uh, if there was a threat, they could go in there, close the door, and uh, survive a bomb blast. So the next uh, hangar that we're coming into is actually a railway up exhibition. Just to see. I'll go down there in a moment. This one just round here is actually the polar bear money money maze. I don't know, that's... Yeah. Good view down here of the carriages that come behind. And I do remember these. We used to have these on... Uh, we were at Trenton Gardens, so I don't know if I've spoken about Trenton Gardens before. And we used to get on a train exactly like this one uh, to go to the swimming baths. And when you got there and you wanted to come back, you move this and you could, the seats would go in either direction, so going and coming back. What wonderful memories. A load of old magazines here. So if you're a, a rail enthusiast and you've got that one edition that's missing, you may want to come and route through these because there's lots to go. Some from slate mining. particular skip was actually used in the James, James Bond film, A View to a Kill, and James Bond, Roger Moore in those days, and uh, was used this to escape. Talking about slates, there's another slate wagon. This is from Blanau Festiniog in North Wales. And it's actually got the slates in there. Mail trains. Oh, yeah. These were actually uh, used in London. Recently, we've been in the on the underground in London, the Tube. There's actually a whole separate underground which was used by the, the Royal Mail, and these are the Royal Mail tra trains, much smaller uh, than the tubes that we were on. But this would carry all the letters, parcels, and packets all underground in London to get your mail very quickly to you. 
Okay, this is for Dublin, this is 1920. William Spence and Sons, the engineers. The, some of the trucks and truck lane tools that you might find on any railway. So we're now going to have a look at some uh, communications devices. There's a telephone that uh, sort of half resembles phones of today's. It's got a push button tab. This button here was to do with party lines where you shared the telephone line with somebody else. And we've got some modern sorts of things here. I think my, I, used to, I, think I used to have that mobile phone, but it's somewhere. I think I might have had that one as well. And then, uh, this is like the beginnings of what we know of mobile phones. The phone didn't always be like that. We've had the ones with dials. We used to have those when we lived in England years ago. Nice, fun phones as well. In England, the uh, telephones are run by the GPO, the General Post Office. So is a, a GPO van, a post office van, post office and telephones, all part of the same thing. One of the engineers would have to go about a bicycle. Any of you remember going to a telephone box like this and putting your pennies in, pressing button A and pressing button B? I remember having a lesson doing that to do that when I was in the Cubs, how to use the telephone. It's the old fashioned, uh, old fashioned post office. And, uh, I'm guessing my post office down the road was not much more modern than this. Very sort of similar. By which time the growth of the telephone market and the introduction of the tax machine and even you know, back in the day it was really complicated so they'd have to go down below ground and uh, wear all the wires and cables and make sure they're all connected properly. Be sure our phone looked pretty much like this one. Lots of different sorts of phones. Yeah, that's, that's still hot on the old crossword, isn't it? Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. If you've got a mobile phone, this is actually where it all started with devices that look like this, which are on the walls. And these are dating back to the end of the 19th century, around about 1880. And then they start to get a little bit more sophisticated and they want to see the or something like this being used. Or maybe something like this one. And then we start to get some hand receivers that can pick up. Yeah, children won't be familiar with this. You used to dial numbers. So you used to put your finger in the hole and you used to dial the number. Particular action that the younger generations might not be familiar with. So in the 1920s, this is what the uh, phones were looking like, and then we can move on. Hello. Who's that? Oh, uh, it's your grandson. Which one? 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 Oh, I was young. Yeah, are you, are you coming to see me, and sir? Over there, we've got oh, yeah. from the 1950s to Where the 1960s. Where are you at the moment? Oh, yes, put it down first. I think our yeah, first photo was taken. Oh, hello. So, well, when we had our first um, house, pretty sure um, this was our green. first telephone. It was, it was red, it was not, uh, it was not green. Who is this? Been closer to the modern times, 1980s. Oh, cool. this to your ear. Wait, wait, what is it? 1990s and 2000s. Pretty much similar to what we have today. Yeah. Pretty much forgotten now is pages. These are pages. Used to be used by doctors a lot. 
the message and you have to go on to the new phone and make a that's, call. That's the listen bit. And these are that's early, the early mobile phones. Wait, is this a newer phone? It's the newer to get, is it? Oh. What's the BT one? Will, pick up one over there. Um, right up to the present, and we now use the internet for our communications. And satellites. These are phones that can use satellites. And uh, this is what the telephone exchange would have looked like. Anita's mother actually worked in the telephone exchange, doing a similar job to this. Telephone. Post office telephone, section engineer. <laughs> Mentioned the James Bond film before, that's actually where they were coming out of. That's where it was filmed. Hands and hook. He's making bricks and making tiles. It's all part of the local industry. An industry that my brother still works in. And all the different bricks. Which are still made around Stoke on Trent, some of them. Bicycles, car, motorbikes, and all BSA there. What have we got on this side? Douglas. Oh, buses there. Let's go and have a look at this one. Today we've come to the Amberley Museum, it's something a little bit different and uh, they've got a bit of a festival or something on today which is steampunk. What's all that about? Well, we're about to find out. Now we're heading towards the entrance, which apparently is this way. All very industrial. Well, 
all this big heavy stuff here is, is actually a grinding mill. So it's where the, uh, the limestone, the chalk would come down and get crushed into smaller parts. Here we've got a brewery display here, right up my street this, and there's an old bottling, putting the cork in the bottle there. We were in Mallorca and uh, she used to hammer the lady in the wine shop. So I think we're going to see lots of uh, different sorts of machinery. This particular one is actually for boot making. And uh, the one next to it uh, is a big heavy singer sewing machine, part of the boot making process. And a uh, back mender, another sewing type machine. And then we come around here. The buffers over there. There's the buffers shining the shoes. Fascinating thing. I'm sure this is more my thing than Anita's though. <laughs> so we're actually in a, a line quarry. This is all built in there. There's railways coming to it. Um, but this is where they talk, turn the chalk into lime, which can then be used for building. So down here they would throw it in, and then we've got inside here, we'd have some coal burning, and it's going to get really hot, and that's going to turn the chalk into lime, which can then be wheelbarrowed off. And so what does that look like? Well, this is the kiln here, and that's where it all happens. So through there, that's where we'd get the lime coming out, and it'd be wheelbarrowed out here and it would be coming in at the top through there and that's where the fire would be. Here's another one with the, the wheelbarrow. Lots of old things around here, all sorts of stuff. Here. Here's the very modern bicycles. Not, not quite so modern. There's a bit of a festival today, so they've got stalls here as well, selling uh, lots of different things, and face painted. And I think we'll probably see quite a few people so, dressed up in their steampunk gear. That's a cool train that Williams found there. I don't know, but this is a, a pump house. Yeah. Machinery in here. Do the pumping. <laughs> well, as it goes, yeah. as it goes, yeah. so, <laughs> bus and some of the people on a trip. Right. We're going to the station entrance and see if we can find a train. Got some live music entertainers. Sounds nice. A bit of fiddling. Train's about to leave. Calden, <laughs> John Fowler. There's our family. Choo -choo. Okay, we're just on the train now at um, Amberley Station. Okay, just being yeah, issued with a ticket, that, so we've got our ticket for the ride. And we're just about to set up now.
limping as we go along. stuff in this site. Lots of transformers there I can see. There's various places that we can go to do this. So it looks quite a modern hangar. These are some huge insulators that you find on those big towers that go across the countryside, the pylons. Relays from junction boxes. Really, all sorts of big stuff here as well. Coming right up to, well, fairly modern computer age. Patent self lubricating engine in Birmingham.
old AA breakdown services. I used to have a key to that somewhere. I remember my dad having one. We could go and phone the breakdown service. And we've just called into the fire station to have some mixture of old and new. And in this room, we've just obviously got the very, very old firefighting equipment. As we walk through here, we've got some engines. Really quite big things. Dennis, I remember the ones like this one in the middle. And then uh, the Green Goddesses. Old Bedfords. trades was the broom and uh, this is the broom makers workshop where I make all those broomsticks. I'm saying nothing grandma can I? And you will see some of the tools that go go to make them. Um, wonder how many of them I'm actually familiar with. Certainly the Brace and bits down there. And the drills, I've used many of those different versions of them. Use many of these tools as well. And the good tool makers would have a good tool chest. All nicely set out, laid out with perfectly sharp tools. system like a treadle sewing machine. It's in a smaller wood lathe. Sharpening stones. And there's some metal turning with all the gears on that one. Wow. Really fascinating pieces of equipment. A bit more like the sort of thing that I might have used. This is the plumbers, the worshipful company of plumbers, in the working in lead. Welcome. I'm videoing do you mind. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll keep. Really quite astounding what you, you turn around a corner here and you find another piece of machinery. Here's a saw, a huge saw, I've never seen one so big, which you could use to cut trees into planks of wood. So since we were down, um, I came in lots of stores and they're set up down here. It's a different thing. Try, I see lots of these in Mallorca. Oh, here are some little beauties. Mm -hmm. 
My wife's sitting here. Without the showers, we 